Earlier, I spoke to Murray Hebert for more on Singapore's election results. He specializes in Southeast Asian studies at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. I asked him if the PAP's sweeping victory was surprising. In the last election in 2011, they had lost a substantial number, a percentage of the popular vote. Uh, they'd never really been that low before. And so people thought maybe there was a trend that, people, that uh, the populace was going to look for for uh, you know, an alternative voice in parliament, give them a larger, larger uh, check and balance. But it didn't happen. Partially, I think people were just pretty enthusiastic about the, the 50th anniversary that just had happened. And uh, they really didn't want to change horses now at a time that the economy is slowing down. Singapore's economy is slowing thanks to China, which is affecting China's economy, which is affecting a lot of Asian economies, including our own. So this was a, uh, a critical time, and they, and they seized the moment. They knew that they were still riding the popularity, let's say, of Lee Kuan Yew uh, and his reign there for so long. Also, uh, people were generally in a jovial mood, so they decided this was the time for an election. Yeah. The party had still had another year, over a year. They could have waited, but under a parliamentary system, you call the election when you want to if you're the party in power. And so they, they picked up a time uh, when the uh, mood was high. Could you classify this and say this was somewhat of a referendum on Lee Kuan Yew's reign there? Well, I think people had a lot of respect for him. There was an outpouring of affection when he died. Uh, I think certainly they recognized that he laid a very strong platform for the economy, rule of law, no corruption, uh, but in drawing in foreign investment. But he's been out of power for 20 years. He hasn't had an influence, but there have been other prime ministers. And the country has faced new problems, new challenges, uh, transportation difficulties, uh, increased uh, population, uh, economic pressures, uh, the inequities between the rich and the poor, some of these things that weren't as big 20 years ago. So the, his successors have had to find new policies. Let's talk about the opposition parties and specifically the Al Junid constituency. What kind of gains did they make? Well, in 2011, Aljunid has five, it's a group constituency, has five uh, uh, seats in the parliament. Uh, they, the opposition won it for the first time last time and knocked out Giorgio, the foreign minister at the time, who was a very popular politician. Uh, this time they won. Again, the opposition won again, but very narrowly. They had to do a recount, and in the end they won by only 2,000 uh, votes. The opposition lost one seat. Uh, in, in Parliament. They have one less than they did. They um, also lost a much bigger percentage of the vote. The opposition had almost 40 percent in 2011. This time they had only 30 percent. So uh, the opposition has slipped a little bit. Um, the youth vote, huge here, a big part of this election. Many say that this was obviously the closest in history. Tell us how the youth vote played into that. Well, people assume the youth might want to see a little more space. One thing you have to say about the PAP, they run a pretty tight ship. The government's pretty tight and the media's pretty controlled. And they, um, the, the people thought with social media, youth may well go to the opposition. In the end, the youth voted seemingly by early numbers, seemed to have voted overwhelmingly for the PAP. That shocked people, a uh, lot shocked observers. They really thought they, there might be a more of a split vote. So the, the youth and the prime minister came out early this morning and Saturday and thanked the youth for voting for him. Murray Hebert, we appreciate your time and your insight. Right. Thank you very much.